But let's get to, because you, you mentioned that really the big story here is about freedom and kind of the reconstruction process. And now one of the things that I kind of wondered about is, so we, we have at the end of the Civil War, um, the Emancipation Proclamation, which ends slavery in territories in rebellion. So, but that doesn't apply to the Indian territory, right? right. So we have the 13th Amendment, which ends slavery in the country. But if I understood it correctly, that doesn't apply here either because it is in the treaties that the U.S. makes after the war with the tribes that slavery really comes to a close with the tribes. Yes, so uh, the five tribes are involved in the Civil War um, in various ways, fighting on the sides of the Union and the Confederacy, uh, trying to stay neutral, some of them becoming refugees in order to avoid the conflict. And it is this this kind of interesting thing where they're obviously part of this war, but they are still separate foreign entities. So yes, even though the Emancipation Proclamation would perhaps kind of technically apply because they are areas in rebellion, um, they're not the United States, so it doesn't. Uh, the 13th Amendment also does not. And so because they are foreign nations, treaties have to be made to make significant changes. And in these treaties, the US is still overstepping its bounds because it is not supposed to have the right or the jurisdiction to change things like citizenship or land allotment since they have uh, just around 30 years earlier like promised that we are not going to touch the land that we forced you to move on to. Um, but yeah, the, the kind of treaty process is what makes this reconstruction uh, interesting because it is forced onto them in a kind of a similar way as some things are forced onto Southerners, uh, but it's, it's more retributive than uh, the South. And um, it also almost has more staying power than a lot of the kind of changes that are made in the South. And that sort of raises two other questions that I was wondering about, because in part, this sort of indicates to us the, um, the importance that Native sovereignty still has, that Native, Native tribes are, as you say, foreign entities. So we can't, even though they live on U.S. soil, they are, they are separate. So that that said, though, we do have these decisions where Georgia ignores the Supreme Court decision with regard to it. So it's this, it's this really contested space, right, when it comes to Native sovereignty. We respect it when we want to, and we ignore it when we want to. Right. Um, and then the other point, um, and this sort of goes in the direction of kind of how do we, how do we look at the West, right? It's like, is is the Indian Territory part of what you kind of indicates a Southern experience or in the sort of where well, I want to um, see what your reaction is, should we think of it also as a Western experience here, what the native tribes are going through because we have to go and make a treaty with the tribes to, um, to, um, to end slavery in the same fashion that it's sort of an afterthought of like, oh, there's peonage in New Mexico and that isn't included in the 13th Amendment. I think um, emancipation in Indian territory is almost more similar in some ways to like Galveston, Texas, where there are still people, white people holding um, black Americans in bondage, even after they're kind of ordered not to. Um, and so the, the U.S. government comes into Indian territory bringing uh, a number of militia to like forcibly do this um, because they are getting word from some African Americans who have like left Indian territory that, you know, this is still going on. We need your help. And the treaty is made, but it's already kind of assumed that this is what is going to happen. Um, so the, the Cherokees, for example, have already um, emancipated their slaves in 1863, around the same time as the Emancipation Proclamation. So I see it as kind of the, hmm, still the same as slavery, and it's just, it really continues longer because some slaveholders refuse to free their slaves versus kind of a debt peonage, which is another labor system that is not kind of really, um, 
discussed or like is almost portedly ignored in things like the 13th Amendment. Sure. Uh, and that's sort of, I think, the importance of kind of trying to figure out where's, where are the separations of Western and Civil War histories that we kind of need to kind of tease out more over the next years in kind of scholarship to kind of delineate where, where is the Civil War in the West, right? 